Welcome to Things You Don't Know. I am Dr. Weaver. Today, we're covering the history of the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, really. How it developed, why it mattered, and the ways it still shapes health, labor, and uh, technology. And I am Chandler Foster. It sounds simple, but the history of the vacuum is a real good example of how small machines can have big social economic impact. Before mechanical cleaning devices, households relied on brooms, carpet beaters, shaking rugs outside, carpet beating. This stirred up a lot of dust, ash, spores, mites, and dirt. Indoor air quality was eh, pretty poor, especially during the coal burning era of the 1800s. And carpets weren't just decoration. No, no. They were thick, heavy, and collected everything. Cleaning them meant hauling them outside and hitting them for long periods of time. Yeah, correct. Home labor was physically demanding. It's important to understand the need before the invention came along. The vacuum solved a major household challenge, not a minor one at all. You know, one of the earliest patents was filed in 1860 by Daniel Hess, who designed a device with rotating brushes and bellows. Now, it didn't use true suction, but it tried to move dust mechanically. There was also Ives McGaffey's 1869 device. It required hand cranking while pushing it, basically multitasking under pressure. Good gugamugga. That sounds awful. Yes, it uh, does. You know, these early machines were very difficult to use. The real shift came when Hubert Cecil Booth in 1901 what he did is he designed a gasoline-powered machine that created continuous suction. But the thing is, it was enormous. It sat outside buildings and ran hoses through windows. Yeah, correct. It required horses to move it. But Booth's design established the central principle of suction cleaning. So along comes James Murray Spangler in 1907. He was a janitor who happened to have asthma. He created a portable electric vacuum. He used an electric fan, a rotating brush, <laughs> and a pillowcase as the dust bag. You know, this was the first design that looked like a vacuum that someone could actually store in a home. Yeah, right. Spangler and, uh, sold his patent to William Hoover, whose company improved the design and added disposable bags and mass marketed it. By the 1920s, portable electric vacuums became a recognized household appliance. This dramatically cut cleaning time, particularly for the middle class homes. Yes, indeed. The rise of major brands such as Hoover, Eureka, Electrolux, and Kirby. From the 1930s through the 1960s, vacuum technology expanded. Companies such as Hoover, Eureka, and Electrolux all developed stronger motors and specialized attachments. But one brand stood out for durability and long service. That was Kirby. Kirby vacuums were built from metal, not plastic. Some households kept the same Kirby unit for decades. Correct. The Kirby company founded in 1911 designed heavy-duty upright vacuums with powerful motors, deep cleaning brush rollers, and extensive attachments. Their direct sales model was controversial at times, but the machines themselves were known for long-term reliability and higher suction strength. I got to tell you, I have a Kirby that actually was from the 1990s. 
I got at an Electrolux recently because the space I'm in isn't, isn't as large as I was in before. And the Electrolux is just easier to, it's lighter and I can get around plus some of the parts I need to fix the Kirby up to bring it back to factory standards are not very readily available. Well, I think that Kirby is going to last you a long, long time, Dr. Weaver. And I don't think you're going to have anything to worry about. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people still use Kirby models from the 1980s and 1990s. They were built to last. So I think you're in pretty good stead. Well, let's hope. Another, another important development bank began in the mid-20th century built-in full house vacuum systems, also called central vacuum systems. These have a motor and dust canister in the basement or the garage. You plug a hose into wall port in any room. Exactly. Advantages include strong suctions, very quiet operation inside the living areas, and the ability to remove dust entirely from the breathing environment since exhaust vents outside the home. They're still used today in larger homes and new construction. And they reduce the need to move a heavy machine from room to room. Yeah. And disposable bags should talk about that. They became standard in the 1950s and 1960s, improving sanitation and allowing finer dust capture. By the late 20th century, HEPA filters, which were originally developed for nuclear facilities, were added to residential vacuums. HEPA filters trapped tiny particles like pollen, dust mites, and dander. Yes. For people with asthma or allergies, this provided major health benefits. Many modern vacuum cleaners remove particles smaller than one micron. This shifted vacuums from simple cleaning devices to health-related appliances. And then in the 1980s and 1990s, cyclonic separation systems became popular. They use centrifugal force to spin dust out of the airflow. This led to the rise of bagless vacuum cleaners. This reduced the need to buy replacement bags and maintain suction strength so much longer. Yeah, indeed. This also increased competition in the vacuum market and expanded consumer choices for price and performance. One of the biggest modern changes came in 2002 when the first Roomba happened. It introduced consumer robotics to the mass market. Early versions simply bounced around rooms, but later models added mapping, sensors, and autonomous navigation. Believe it or not, robot vacuums even coordinate with mopping attachments, phone apps, and even home security sensors. That's just wild. Yes, it is. You know, they represent a shift from, quote, tools you use to, quote, tools that work on their own. They also support aging populations and people with mobility issues by reducing manual labor. So, vacuum cleaners have consistently reduced household labor, especially in the first half of the 20th century, when most domestic work fell to the women folk. <laughs> reduced mm. cleaning time made it easier to work outside the home and pursue education. And in modern times, automation continues that trend, saving labor for families with long hours. In, indeed, yeah. The, when you're working a long time, it's it's you need to save every minute you can for other things like relaxation. And additionally, improvements in filtration have made homes safer for people with respiratory conditions. Modern concerns include energy use plastic waste, and motor efficiency. 
Many manufacturers now focus on washable filters, long-lasting motors, and recyclable components. Some central vacuum systems last 20 to 40 years with minimal replacement parts. Now, future developments will include fully integrated home cleaning robots that vacuum, mop, and monitor air quality, self-emptying systems with sealed containers, smart air quality sensors that activate cleaning automatically, quieter motors with higher efficiency. So the goal is a home that stays clean with minimal human effort. That's right. And with aging populations worldwide, autonomous cleaning will likely become a standard feature of many modern homes. Well, you know, vacuum cleaners began as bulky, experimental machines, but they reshaped domestic life, improved health, and drove technological innovation, including modern robotics. Their evolution shows how a simple idea removing dust, can change daily life. And from manual sweepers to Kirby's to whole house systems, the technology keeps on advancing. Yes, indeedy. Well, listen, thanks for joining us for this episode of Things You Don't Know. We will see you next time. Bye for now. And stay curious, folks.